as you can see, a bit of a gloomier day today on the farm. The uh, the mist and the fog and the nasties come down and the wind is getting up a little bit and there's, uh, yeah, it's not so nice, nice today. So I wanted to show you something that's a bit lower down and uh, a bit in the woods today because it's a bit more comfortable. So you can hear the dogs sticking, sticking close to me probably and uh, certainly there's a bit of wind coming up. And I wonder if you can see in there just fluttering in the wind. Can you see there's ferns there growing on the surface of that tree? Now these, these ferns, I'm no expert in ferns but uh, it looks to me like these are what they call epiphytes. They live on top of epi, uh, a tree, uh, but they're not sites, they're fights because they're friendly, see? They, uh, yeah, epiphytes. Pretty sure tree ferns there, pretty sure they're epiphytes. There's another sort here just living on this uh, branch, just on it, but not in it, as it were. It's, uh, it's a bit of indication that um, We've got clean air around here and they're a privilege to see. And as I say, they're epiphytes, not epicytes. Uh, they're not taking stuff out of the tree itself. They're just on the top of there like that. So here's another example I picked up earlier. Uh, this had fallen out of the sky. Uh, it's sitting on the branch there and it's on a twig sort of thing. And the twig, you can see there's another one, is snapped off and it's hit the ground. And that thing is living on quite merrily there because it doesn't take its uh, sustenance out of the branch or the tree or the twiglet itself. It, uh, it gets its stuff out of the air around it. All these epiphytes do is that they get a bit of support and a bit of uh, place to be, I suppose, by you just attach into a branch or a twig or whatever it happens to be. And uh, then they, uh, they make their own way. They supply their own needs, as it were. Now that's very different, for example, from a fruit bush or uh, an apple tree cherry tree. I'd love to be able to show you some apple trees here and be able to demonstrate my point. We're working on getting some in here, but uh, I ordered some before Christmas. They haven't made it. But you'll know the principle. With an apple tree, what they do is they find a variety of apple that gives you a good strong root stock. That's the roots in the ground. And then they kind of cut it off. And on the top of that, they stick on um, some nice eating varieties or whatever it is they want the apple to be able to do. A better variety of apple goes onto a strong rootstock and then you get an apple tree. It's what they call grafted in. Now we talk about apples like this because that's what comes our way in this part of the world, but when the Lord Jesus was talking about this sort of idea, he, uh, he talked about the vine because vines are grafted in the same sort of way. They've got a rootstock that does what they want the roots to do and supplies nutrients to what's above, and then they cut it off and they graft into the side this um, Nice grapefruit. You can see, can't you, that the relationship of the fruit bearing vine to the rootstock is very different to the relationship of an epiphyte to the branch it just clings to but doesn't take anything from. Now, where apples are concerned, if somebody just takes a seed out of an apple and throws it in the ground, what you get is something like this scrubby tree behind me here, because this is a crab apple. Somebody's been walking along here in times past along this hedgerow, as it was, no offence line and uh, they've been eating an apple, they've just chucked it on the ground and something sprung up. Well, yeah, the rootstock was probably what they wanted for the, for the apple that uh, they were growing uh, back in the day, or maybe not, maybe it's just a scrubby rootstock because it goes with a nice eating variety of apple. But uh, you don't want a scrubby tree like that. You want something that gives you something worthwhile. And it's that pursuit of something worthwhile that inspires the whole grafting business in the, group, in the fruit game. Now in John chapter 15, when the Lord Jesus was talking to his disciples and saying, you come and come and get from me what I've got for you, he used this analogy of the vine. And he said, look, I'm the vine, I'm the rootstock, and that goes back to the Old Testament and stump of Jesse and the root of David and all that. Lots of link ups there, let's not get bogged down. He says, I am your rootstock. You are the branches, that which is grafted in. And he says, you've got to be grafted into me. I'm the vine, you are the branches, whoever abides in me bears much fruit. Not like those scrubby old crab apple trees over there, but much good fruit. And what Jesus is saying is this, I'm not calling you to come to me for a bit of a bit of a crutch, a bit of a leg up, some structure, something to, to sit on and sort yourself out. That'll be an epiphyte. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. That's a grafting process, completely different. You come to Christ, yeah, you join on to him, but then he willingly, gladly pours all manner of good things into you so you can live a fruitful sort of life.
Now the thing you've got to be clear about is this. You see those uh, crab apple trees back there I was showing you earlier on? Well, I could cut one of them off and uh, I could take some, you know, nice fruit bearing rootstock type stuff and I could graft it in there and then I'd have a nice rootstock that works in this area and I'd have, you know, a fruit tree growing off it, theoretically. The trouble is this. That graft that goes on there, it could get rejected and that's what stops me doing it really because I'm not an expert on these things and I'd probably get it wrong. That graft, to be viable, it's got to be yeah, grafted into the vine, grafted into the rootstock, and then it's got to go on drawing from that rootstock the good stuff that makes it fruitful and makes it grow. So you turn from sin, you turn to Christ, you graft it in, but then you've got to go on drawing out the good things that are being given to you or you're not going to bear fruit. And you do that by spending time with God, by speaking to him, we call it praying, it doesn't have to be like that, it's speaking to him. And also by listening to what he's got to say, by opening up his word, the Bible, looking, learning, living in the light of it. Well, I hope that's been of interest to you. Thanks for listening to the word for the week. God bless you. Have a good week.